Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is so good to be back. So I recently tried KLM's premium comfort class on an overnight flight from Kuala Lumpur to Amsterdam. It took about 13 hours. And in this video, I'm gonna be telling you everything that I can about premium comfort class from, you know, what does the extra leg room feel like? Is the food any better? Um, other perks, also cons, basically everything that you need to know to decide whether this is something for you. Let's get straight into this. Luggage. Now with a standard economy ticket, you get um, one bag of up to 23 kg that you can check in. Whereas on you know, premium comfort class, you can actually check in two bags of up to 23 kg. You also get something called Sky Priority. And at KLIA Airport, there were at least two Sky Priority counters um, and there was hardly any queues for them. So we, we dropped off our bags super fast. And you know I did have a look at the, the normal queue and there were you know, about 15 people queuing up there. So Sky Priority was a nice little perk seats. So there aren't actually that many premium comfort class seats and depending on the plane you'll see anywhere between 21 and 28 of these seats. The configuration is 232 whereas in economy um, we normally see like 333 or 343. You're also in your own separate cabin so you're separated from economy and business class and this makes it feel quite cozy. Now, just as a side note, I read that KLM are in the process of bringing in uh, premium comfort class. So by the end of 2024, all of their Boeing 777 and 787 planes that are doing con intercontinental flights should have this. Looking at the technical specs, um, you get 99 centimeters of legroom compared to 79 centimeters in economy. You also get to recline your seat by 20 centimeters compared to 12 and a half centimeters in economy. Now the armrest is also wider and you get a bit more neck support. There's a movable light with different brightnesses and in the armrest on the right hand side you have your stowaway table or foldable table um, and then on the left there is space for these noise cancelling headphones that they give you and also there's space for um, your water bottle so lots of lots of little uh, lots of little space saving uh, things that they've done here. There's a button which activates a leg rest and you know your legs don't fully go up like horizontally uh, they just go up by a small angle but it definitely helps like on the flight it really yeah, it really helps take the pressure off sometimes um, and there's also a little foot rest which is good too when you can make it work and I'll be talking more about this later on in the video so overall the chair is definitely more comfortable it's more spacious um, what made the biggest difference for me was not having like the seat in front of me like right here like you know what I mean like it's Oh, that makes me feel so claustrophobic sometimes. Entertainment system. Now looking at the technical specs, the screen is 13.3 inches. Why are we talking in inches now? Okay, 13.3 inches. Whereas in economy, it's anywhere between nine to 11 inches. Now I, I don't tend to use the entertainment system much when I fly, um, but you know, my husband was really happy with, with it. And he said there was a good selection of movies available too. Food. Let's talk about the food. So we were given a menu outlining you know, what we would be given for uh, breakfast and dinner. And also um, you can see that there was a much larger selection of drinks available. So overall, the quality of the food was definitely better. It was tastier. Um, I think like the portion size was slightly bigger as well. I liked having like proper metal cutlery, like proper glasses to drink out of. Um, and I remember looking at the poke bowl and thinking, oh wow, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of fresh vegetables here. I just, uh, I'm not used to seeing that on a plane. Extra perks. So as mentioned earlier on, you do get um, noise cancelling headphones, like the proper ones that go over your ears. You also have uh, the business class pillow and blanket. I can't really remember anything special, like particularly special about the pillow, but the blanket was definitely better quality. It just felt much nicer, it was thicker, because um, you know, normally on long haul flights, I'm absolutely freezing. I'm always using the blanket, always wish for a second blanket actually. Um, but ironically on this flight, I was quite warm, so I hardly used that blanket, which was a bit of a shame. There's also a little toiletry kit that you get. This was handed out at the beginning of the flight and it reminded me of flying when I was younger. Like I haven't seen one of these kits 
for ages. So it was nice to see it again. Um, you get a, an eye mask, a pen, a toothbrush, tooth, well, you don't get toothpaste, you get these weird kind of toothpaste tablets, which I wasn't a big fan of, um, and also earplugs. Now, before I get into the cons, if you are getting any value out of this video, please could you do me a favor and hit that like button. Um, it will it will really help me out. It will just you know, show YouTube that this video is half decent and that will really help this channel grow as well. Thank you very much. Cons. Now, one of the small cons is that you don't have your own separate toilet and um, this does make a difference on a long haul flight, I think. Um, so you've got to go back into economy class and use their toilets. Um, it would have been nice if, I don't know, maybe we could have used the business class toilets. I'm assuming they're better. I've never seen them before, but uh, yeah, that was a small con. Okay, the other thing is that I think there are a couple of features that weren't fully self-explanatory. So for example, the tray table, as embarrassing as this sounds, like I, I just pressed that button really hard and the tray table came like, came out at quite a speed and it almost hit me in the face. Um, so I think a little like warning or something would be handy. The other thing which that I do think is legit is the footrest. But in order to reset it, you need to bring it all the way up. It's a little bit tricky to explain, but basically there was a seat pocket where you could put your stuff in. And of course I'm gonna put stuff in like, why bother having a seat pocket if you can't put anything in there? So I wasn't able to bring the footrest up fully, which means that it was like stuck in these positions that weren't that comfortable. Afterwards, like finally figured out that you had to remove everything from your seat pocket in order to bring the footrest fully up. A minor thing, which I think would have been worth explaining, price. So my husband and I, we had return tickets um, in economy from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur. Three days before we were due to fly back to Amsterdam, we decided to check out um, whether there was an option to upgrade and it was still available. It cost um, 30, 35, I wish it cost 35 euros. It cost 145 euros per person. And uh, we decided, okay, why not? Let's try this out. And um, I'm sure upgrade prices vary depending on the time of year, the availability, the destination. Um, but you know, if you have any tips on like your past experience in upgrading, any, any sort of comments on this, I'd love to hear them. It'd be really interesting and also helpful to others too. Now, I don't normally sleep on long haul flights. I get maybe two to three hours, but I on this flight, I actually slept a fair bit. It's uh, something that I haven't done in like forever. And um, my husband also managed to sleep a bit too. Yeah, yeah, we came off the flight, you know, feeling relatively, well, relatively good, like all things considered. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, until next time, goodbye.